The woodpecker stands as a living embodiment of nature's engineering brilliance. Engineering brilliance and design just doesn't enter in. Why? Because we can't. We cannot allow, as one author once said, a divine foot in the door. So, the title is The Common Woodpecker, Chance or Design? Now, I'm going to just run through quickly some of these adaptations with a few uh, photos, and I'll go into a lot more detail. Um, on the left is the North American uh, pileated woodpecker. On the right is the European green woodpecker. And I want you to notice that it has two feet up against the bark of the tree. Again, two toes in the front, two toes in the back. As I said, most, most birds have three toes in the front, one toe in the back to grasp a perch. Well, they grasped vertical surfaces, so they need something different. Notice how the tail of each of them is buttressed up against the trunk. Now, that does a couple of things. First, it acts like the third leg of a tripod, again, to give it stability as it's drumming on the tree. Uh, but we'll get a little bit more about that as we go further. Look a little creepy? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's about uh, two and a half, almost three times the length of its beak. And uh, how does it how does it do that? If it's way out there, where do you put it when it comes back in? There's a photo of a skull, and there is a bone inside uh, called the hyoid bone. The film called it hyoid apparatus, and it breaks apart on the other side of the bill, loops around, actually makes a big loop down into the throat. But then it comes back up around the skull, between the skin and the skull, inserts into the right nostril, and in some extends all the way to the tip of the upper beak. So woodpeckers have a problem. They have to do two things at the same time. You have to evolve a longer tongue and you have to have a retraction mechanism at the same time. Because if you just get a somewhat longer tongue that can actually stick outside the beak, well, you're going to cut it off the first time you go punching for it, pecking for anything. <laughs> this didn't quite get done correctly, but if you start over here, okay, then you see the tongue starts here, it goes back, um, and over here now it comes down, and here, here's the tip of the tongue, comes back down this way, and comes up around and sticks into the up right nostril of the upper beak. Now, woodpeckers sometimes slam their heads in the trees with 1,200 Gs of force. It only takes 100 Gs to cause a concussion in humans. Now, they have a number of adaptations that spread that force around, uh, we've now learned, by the way, this is kind of the old idea that some recent articles have come out that demonstrate simply because of the much smaller size of the woodpecker brain, it can't generate that much force. It's more like uh, just 400, 500 Gs. <laughs> now, what I'm going to show you here next are some statements I gathered from evolutionary websites talking about the woodpecker stands as a marvel of evolutionary craftsmanship, orchestrating a biomechanical symphony, paints a vivid picture of an evolutionary masterpiece. At the heart of the woodpecker's pecking prowess lies a biomechanical rhythm orchestrated with unparalleled precision. All this happened by chance, you know. The woodpecker's remarkable ability to absorb impact is not a stroke of luck, but a result of millions of years of evolutionary innovation, which requires hundreds of strokes of luck. <laughs> yeah, it's not just one. The woodpecker stands as a living embodiment of nature's engineering brilliance. Do you ever think of nature as being brilliant? Well, apparently these guys it is. Now, I still marvel when I, when I pulled these things out of various articles to, to show you today because I look at, I read what they've said and said, why don't you get it? You just have this block in your brain that 
I can talk about craftsmanship. I can talk about symphony. I can talk about masterpiece, unparalleled precision, um, innovation, brilliant, engineering brilliance, and design just doesn't enter in. Why? Because we can't. We cannot allow, as one author once said, a divine foot in the door. <laughs> so, as I talked about, the beak, as I said, is very hard, it's tough, it's shaped like a chisel. If you took any other bird species beak outside of woodpeckers, and they, if they tried to jam it into a tree, the, the beak would just break. It can't handle it. So the woodpecker's beak has to be extremely tough. It mentions several layer, layers of uh, keratinized um, uh, structures. Skull. Unlike the skulls of most birds, the woodpecker skull is fortified with specialized bones, spongy tissue, though now we've learned that tissue is not so spongy, forming a natural shock absorber that dissipates the force of each peck. They mentioned this spongy tissue right behind the bill and, and the very front of the skull. Well, it's not really spongy. It's cancellous bone, which forms a lattice work. And what that does, it distributes the shock, doesn't absorb it, so that a lot of that shock goes up through the top of the skull, goes down through the vertebrae, down into those stiff tail feathers, and back into the tree. Synchronized dance of muscles, tendons. It's also a dance, you know. So. Skeletal structures ensures that each peck contributes to the bird's goal, whether it be foraging for insects or communicating with other woodpeckers. That's something a lot of people don't know. The woodpecker's drumming is communication. It's how they demonstrate to other woodpeckers in the area that there's a need to be alert, there's a predator around. It advertises to a mate. It also communicates, this is my territory, to other male woodpeckers in the area. And the tongue. Now, as I showed you, it, 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 the tip of the tongue is out here, and it goes down, and it makes a big loop into the throat, up around the back of the head, comes down into the right nostril, and inserts itself almost to the end of the beak. Um, and as I mentioned, that's a real evolutionary problem. Because you have to do two things at once. You have to evolve a longer beak, and you have to be able to retract it somewhere. Tail. The tail feathers are very stiff, but they're also anchored in a way that, as I said earlier, a lot of that shock it comes through the upper bill, goes up around the skull, and goes back down the spine and gets returned through the tail into the, into the tree itself. And so you always see the, see, again, it's, it's also the third leg of a tripod to help give it stability on the tree. Neck muscles, dynamic interplay between powerful neck muscles, flexible cervical structure. So the cervical structure is also flexible to achieve rapid and controlled pecking motions. Some woodpeckers can, can, can peck 20 times per second. Think about that, 20 times per second moving the entire head 20 times per second. This adaptability is stark, stark contrast to some other bird species that may lack the agility required for such <laughs> percussive feats. And one of my favorites, the nictitating membrane. Specialized adaptation in a form of a nictitating membrane, often referred to as the third eyelid, this translucent protective veil serves as a shield, momentarily covering the eye just before impact. The split-second defense, split defense mechanism acts as a safeguard, preventing debris and potential harm from reaching the eye during the intense drilling activities. What would this poor woodpecker do if it starts pecking in the wood and there's a few wood chips coming out, but it doesn't have a nick to same membrane? You, you, you begin to see all these things have to be present at the same time. Otherwise, the woodpecker doesn't survive. Complementing nictitating membrane is, is the woodpecker's rapid blink reflex, an astonishingly uh, swift response that further shields the eyes. The ability to blink at an accelerated pace, almost like a protective reflex, adds an extra layer of defense against the perils of rapid pecking. As I, it also prevents the eye from popping out. That, that would not be a good thing. So, um.
They need something to keep those eyes in there. <laughs> the brain. They use their bills to excavate holes for raising young, forage for insects, ensconced in dead limbs, and drum to establish territory. To produce the loudest drums, they ram their bills at rapid speeds up to 25 times per second into trees and even utility poles. <laughs> Ever heard a woodpecker drumming into your wood siding? Uh, I've heard a few tell me that story already. Uh, <laughs> Excavating nests happens more slowly, but requires more force. Woodpeckers sometimes slam the trees with 12,000 Gs of force, greatly surpassing, surpassing 100 Gs. As I mentioned, that's, it's no longer that high, just four to 500 times. Even though it seems like the birds could be injuring their brains, the results reveal the woodpeckers perform under a safety threshold. Birds would need to either drill, drill twice as fast or hit a much stiffer surface like the metal on a utility pole to incur injury. If this theory gains further support, then it could turn out that there's one simple explanation for how woodpeckers avoid injury. Physics. Somehow woodpeckers have mastered the physics of what's not going to kill them by pecking into trees. Or as I used to like to say, they bang their heads in the trees. They're just strange birds. I mean, who would think to do that? Uh, some woodpeckers will identify uh, um, tunnels in the dead tree where there's insect larvae or smaller insects. And so some of them will simply tap until they hear a hollow sound. And there, that's where they would drill the hole. And that's why they keep banging their heads into gutters. Sounds hollow. Must be some food in there. <laughs> so the quick summary here is that uh, they have an amazing beak, extremely hard, tough, very pointed, chisel-like. Uh, the skull, um, well, it has a number of shock dispersing mechanisms just in the skull alone. Its tongue, as it says, can extend three to five times the length of the beak. Uh, zygodactyl feet, two toes in front, two toes in the, in the back, so it can hang on to vertical surfaces, not just a perch. You never see woodpeckers on the perch of a tree. Never. You always see them on a tree trunk or a utility pole. Uh, the tail is very strong, uh, very tough. There are strong muscles in the back um, as well, and in the, in the, uh, where the uh, tail feathers are, and the ones in the center are, are particularly stiff. Neck muscles, as, as we talked about, those are um, extremely strong muscles that generate that kind of force. And they're also um, that repeated drumming 20 times per second. There has to be a quick recovery of those muscles as well. Uh, the nictitating membrane, as I said, my favorite, a third eyelid that keeps debris from coming into the eye, also helps keep the eyes from popping out. Now, the brain is able to absorb the shock, first of all, because it, it fills nearly the in, entire internal structure of the skull. There's only a slight layer of fluid. With humans, around our brain is a space of about that big, that a concussion is when you receive a force hard enough that the brain pushes that fluid aside and gets bruised by the skull. Not going to happen with the brain with the brain of the woodpecker because it, there's just no room to, to cause a bruise, to, to, to get much force there. Uh, the brain as well is highly protected, as I just mentioned, and the drumming behavior is just really pretty amazing. And uh, when you hear a woodpecker next time, just start thinking of all these amazing things that God put in place, put them together. And even more so here, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So something that's true, people are suppressing this truth. 19, since what may be known about God is plain to them. Why? Because God has made it plain to them. He's gone out of his way to make sure this is clear and unmistakable. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, what? Had been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Hence the woodpecker.